Okay, hey, this is Mark coming to you from Baker's Green Acres, and I'm going to do another live video today, and uh, I may just stick with this format because I'm having problems with the other format. I don't want to say it, but uh, we can easily just take it from here and put it over on the other format, and then it'll be kind of cataloged over there, but that's at Baker's Green Acres over on YouTube if you want to look at the, the full archive. And uh, so it worked out pretty well yesterday, so I thought I would do it again. I mean, the problem is that if I make a two-minute video, a five-minute video, it takes a half an hour to upload. <coughs> and my reason for doing this, um, it comes from deep within side, and I think it was when I was a little kid and I used to go to show and tell in grade school. I think that's where it comes from. But uh, a friend of mine out in Maine sent me a video and he came up on his three-year-old son and said, what are you doing? The kid was at the computer and the little boy said, I'm watching the Mark Baker video. So that was it. I felt like I'd arrived. And I'm going to keep doing this because it's fun and I get a lot of input um, from people that are going the same direction as we're going, you know, with the homesteading thing. I don't know if this backdrop looks too good. i got to get a little high-tech about this. But, um, you know, I've been approached to make some decisions about this, and uh, little by little it's coming to me how this could all be something that could be a little bit bigger than just some wannabe farmer pulling, a, you know, an iPhone out of his pocket all the time. Yeah, let me, I'm going to rest that against this. Might have had too much coffee this morning. But my job today is I'm baling hay, and I have to have this done before noon. And then tomorrow's 4th of July. But what I wanted to share was this, this notion of where we go from here. We, we were a commercial outfit for 15 years, and we raised pork chicken and beef and sold to restaurants and retail stores and a lot of uh, just customers that would come up the driveway and a couple of distributors and that went pretty well but we found out that we were forced to um, partner with uh, state agencies and we didn't like that very well and I thought that they were really inefficient and uh, every time they wanted to get a point across to me it was with the state police and you know it just <laughs> it's not good so we decided you know I'm at a point where I'm looking to do something else I did military for 20 years I couldn't have pulled a phone out of my pocket and shown you what I was doing during that time I couldn't have um, and now I can and it's it's kind of fun it does something for me and I feel like it does something for all of us you know, but here's where, I, here's where I come down on this. When I do what I do, homestead, when I create food for my family and my friends, it's kind of a spiritual issue, and that's going to sound a little touchy-feely, but it kind of is. It fulfills something in you, and it feels good, and you feel like you've gotten something done, and it's something worth while doing and so that's why I do it and I'm going to continue to do it I like it but I'm wondering if my role isn't to help others along the way you know in this uh, I guess we'd call it a spiritual quest I probably shouldn't do that some people won't like that you know equating um, farming to spirituality, but for me it is, uh, so I guess that's, I'm going to, um, because I don't, I don't actually make any of this stuff, you know, I don't make any of these plants, I don't make any of these animals, I just, I just supervise them, I just make things better for them, I just give them the nutrients that they need, and I build the fences where they're supposed to go, and this was this whole thing was a journey for me because coming out of the Air Force, this is not second nature to me. 
mean, this isn't how we do things in the Air Force. A lot of things did carry over. A lot of things from my aviation career carried over. Uh, but, you know, it is, it is different. And I found my way through this. And uh, we probably would have continued in our, um, our commercial farming if it were not for these state departments that want to, you know, middleman everything. Um, we probably would have continued. And I'm glad that we didn't because there's so much to learn in this that you don't learn when you're commercial farming because in commercial farming, it's get her done and get her done now. And you're producing as much of one thing as you possibly can. You still try to stay organic, but it's hard because when you have a monoculture going, uh, you're not in balance as a farm. You're way out of balance and when there's a, a gap someplace, something's going to fill it and it's not always a good thing. Alright, so I'm glad to be out of the commercial end of things um, and to be able to diversify more in what we're doing and that way we can contact you know, and, and spend time with more people and you know, that's really what this life is all about. It's uh, the people that we meet and the, and the books we read, I've heard. Um... I hope this is okay. This is a good place. I'm going to rest right here. So, um, I've had some ideas thrown at me, and I've been thinking it through. And um, here's what we might do. We might. And I'm, I'm putting this out there because I want input from people that might need help on this. And if you need the help, then, and there was enough of you that needed the help, then maybe we'd pull the trigger on this thing. Maybe. I don't want to pull the trigger on something that I'm, that's not going to be fruitful or nobody needs, you know. Um, so here's what I'm thinking. And uh, my nephew, Matt Travis, came up with this idea. He is a health coach, and he does an online coaching uh, seminar, and he helps people through... Um, health challenges. He's credentialed, you know, he's got a lot, a lot of credentials and is able to do this very effectively. But the next step is you got to have the food to go in that body of yours that's going to make it heal itself and grow and grow right. And uh, because your body will heal itself, but the, the food that's out there is causing some problems. And I think we all know that at this point, but how do you get good food? Because Nowadays, uh, they've got it figured out where something can be on the shelf. It can be called organic, but you know darn well it isn't. But you'll pay 20% more for it because it makes you feel good. You really need the right thing. You need the right stuff. All right, that's better. I'm up against my baler right now. So I, th I think that there's a need out there for good food. And there's a need out there for you all to be able to homestead it yourself, to create your own, you know, to do this, this spiritual journey yourself for those that want to do it. I mean, you might have 50 square feet in Connecticut, but you can homestead that. You can do things with that. There's tons of things you can do with it. When you get into it, you'll find out how much uh, your career field that you've trained for is applicable to homesteading there. Sometimes the light on this just isn't, I don't want to go out here. Yeah, maybe I'll have to. All right. So <clears throat> there. All right. So I think a lot of people like that video I've made yesterday got 700 views on Facebook and then it got, I don't know how many views on YouTube. It's hard to know. So people are obviously interested in this homesteading. <clears throat> the commercial farming, not so much because you've got to have land and you've got to have resources to get it going. And there's a lot to know. And when you make failures, they're big failures. But in homesteading, it's a little easier. I mean, you don't have to have a bunch of land. You don't have to have... Um, a whole bunch of resources to get into it. In commercial farming, the videos that I made, we call them anyone can farm videos. 
and it was a takeoff on that movie Ratatouille, where the the chef that you never got to meet, he was you only seen his spirit, he was dead, said anyone can cook, and he was trying to get the point across that anybody can be a great chef. So that's where we get the idea for anyone can farm. Because uh, industrial agriculture is saying, no, only we can farm. And we've got the, the university here saying, you know, backing us up. So I, I don't agree with that. I think if you're producing uh, carbohydrates and proteins, you're farming. Whether you want to acknowledge that or not, it's up to you, but you're farming. If you ha- grow one tomato plant, that's a bunch of tomatoes that you're not buying from the store, and you can say, I grew these tomatoes. And when you eat those tomatoes, it, it does something. It fulfills kind of a, a spiritual need. I, I can't explain it. Maybe somebody here will have to explain it. So what if we called this the Anyone Can Farm Homesteaders Guild? And, you know, I will still make these videos. I will still do this. I'll try to make a video a day or two a day. I can do it pretty easily. It's not hard for me. I actually enjoy it. It fulfills something in me, as strange as that sounds. But then set up a, a place where people could go to get individual guiding into their, uh, their own adventure into homesteading. And I'm not sure exactly how that's going to look. Uh, my wife has done an online course, and what I see on the computer is like 20 faces of people. Some of them are muted, and some of them are talking. And then the lady that's doing the class, she, she took an Ayurveda class, is instructing a block of instruction. And so I've sat down, and I've put together a 12-week block of instruction that's just the basics of get these things done and then let your brain start to go and and map out the path for your adventure in homesteading and it's this doesn't matter whether you live in town or you live out in the boonies you don't need a whole bunch of property or resources to be a homesteader Um, there's so many aspects to it uh, that i think you can find your way you can you can definitely find your way but what we've seen, you know, most recently I was talking with a guy, and I, you're going to know who I'm talking about here. The, this guy's going to know I'm talking about him. But his mom sees all these things. She, her heritage is a very subsistence-based heritage in the country that she came from. And she came to the United States, got the big education, and then did all those things for a long time. And now she's older, and she wants to get back to her heritage. And, um, I, you know, she purchased a big piece of land and then didn't know where to start and would go to Home Depot and buy a fruit tree and plant it in the middle of a hay field. And that was an effort to get things started to back to the homestead, back to basics. She didn't really know where to start. And I can, I can relate to that because when I started this, I didn't, I didn't know where to start. I mean, this all started with when we bought a piece of property when I was still in the Air Force and we needed a place to put my wife's horse and uh, that's where it began and then I got a chicken and then it was like the gateway into this this whole thing which has been an excellent adventure for me my wife my children I mean my health is good I enjoy my work every day and it's exciting and it's it's hard you know you need hard things in front of you but your homestead can be as hard as you want it. It doesn't ha- You can tailor it to what you want. But I, it seems to me that what happens to people is they say, okay, I'm just going to keep a few chickens. And then before you know it, they want to find out how they keep calves so they can have, you know, really nice T-bone steaks. So this is what I'm propo- proposing is that anyone can farm homesteaders guild. And it would be a interactive internet training with yours truly and um, as we go through some of the basics with just this little dumb phone that terrorizes me daily I could take it with me and show basic things basic things and um, and then 
have some one-on-one -on -one time with the individual students to where we could say, okay, what do you got and where do you want to go? And then I can say, ooh, don't step on that. That'll go boom. That's part of what this is about is to explain to people the best way to go. You know, I mean, I want people to make mistakes, but I don't want to make mistakes where it's going to discourage them and make them want to quit. <clears throat> and, and my reference to don't step on that is a landmine reference. You know, that's a military thing. But, you know, you, I don't mind if you make mistakes, like troops that work for me. I don't mind if they make mistakes, but I don't want to make mistakes that's going to hurt them or hurt them bad. You know, I don't mind if they get hurt a little, but I don't want them getting hurt bad. <clears throat> so it's the same thing with the Homesteaders Guild. And what I'm finding out, even when I make these videos, is people chime in. And there's a lot of talent out there. And it won't be a, a Baker's Green Acres thing. It'll be a, just a, a place to meet and, and share information. I've gone on uh, line and looked at some homesteading sites. And they're excellent. And we have some things to share as well. That's the way I feel, I, I feel about this. And I want to do it. I mean, I just want to share it. Because it's, it's so cool. All right. So that's my point that I want to get across today. And uh, I covet your input on this. And if anybody would like to contact me, feel free. I mean, some of my best contacts are people that have just bit the bullet, picked up the phone, and called me. I'll answer the phone, and we can chat. And it's been... You know, the richness of my life is the people that are in my life. And, you know, some of this is, is crazy because here I am at 58 years old and I'm in contact with people that I grew up with. And they're able to see what I do and I'm able to see what they do. They do. And it makes me feel like, man, I'm glad I landed here. I'm glad I landed here. Um, but uh, by the same token you have to decide where you want to land and that's part of what the homesteaders guild would be about you know to, to the do's the don'ts the um you know some of the rules and regs and how to deal with that stuff too that's uh, always pretty interesting because there's always somebody there to tell you that you can't do this or you got to check with them before you do it and i'm here to tell you that it's the nature of being a free american citizen is you do what you want to do, so long as you don't break any laws. And laws are not re not necessarily just regulations put out there by certain corporations that want to just own people. Okay, so we can go through that though, and um, yeah, so that's it. And uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna continue with this Facebook um, format for a while. The one I did yesterday. Uh, my voice wasn't synced up and my wife said that that was her fault but we'll see and if this doesn't work we'll have to go find something else but we will okay this is Mark from Baker's Green Acres remember anyone can farm